Okay, so if we have an object sitting on the ground, and in this I'm also going to talk a little bit about free body diagrams because um, I'm, I'm seeing things which are, are somewhat worrisome in terms of ability to draw correct free body diagrams. I'm seeing people who maybe didn't quite get that piece, and so their free body diagrams aren't really quite free body diagrams. You have an object. It is rather generalized. Your forces all start out of the middle of that object. They don't start on the edge of the object. They don't start next to the object. They don't start under the object. Um, forces originate from the center of the... Whoops, that's not a straight line. <laughs> well, geez, Louise Moser. Um, that's a free body diagram. Ideally, they should meet. My drawing is a little bit sloppy here um, with doseri. That's kind of what you get. If something is sitting on the ground, on the earth, we're going to assume everything we're talking about here is on the earth, there is a force downward on it. What, what is that force downward on it? Gravity. Force of gravity. That is F sub G. And the force of gravity is always equal to your mass times gravity. No exceptions. It is equal to your mass, the mass of the object, times gravity. If something is sitting on the ground, no other forces are acting on it, we don't have ropes or slopes or anybody else doing anything else to it, the ground is exerting a force upward on it. What do we call that force? We've talked about this sort of in prelude, normal force. Um, we haven't hit that portion of the notes yet, but it's the normal force. Now, what is normal force equal to? The answer is it depends. If we have an object sitting here on the ground, nothing else happening with it, um, we can prove that normal force is equal to force of gravity. How do we prove that mathematically? Sum of forces. So if this thing is not moving, and we're, we're going to concentrate on the y-axis here. We have no information about the x-axis in this particular problem. Sum of forces on the y-axis. So that's going to be where our, our net force is. Is this thing moving? Is it spontaneously rising into the air? Is it spontaneously thinking, sinking through the surface? No. Then that equals zero. That's also equal to its mass times its acceleration on that axis. When we started out doing these problems, we kept saying, OK, sum of forces on that axis is zero. It's true. That also means that its acceleration is zero. And this is equal to all the forces acting up on this object and all the forces acting down on the object. If you tend to forget that, then start off with this. All the forces up, all the forces down. Now, in this case, we only have one of each. It's fairly simple. In this case, sum of forces on the y is equal to the normal force up, force of gravity down, and it's equal to zero. What that means is that Fn is equal to negative Fg, which means that Fn is equal to negative of mass times gravity. Acceleration due to gravity is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Therefore, the normal force is going to be positive. That, that's consistent with our conventions about um, Cartesian coordinate system, that up away from the Earth is positive and down towards the center of the Earth is negative. This is the easy case. This is simple. If this thing is on a cable instead of sitting on the ground, what changes here? If it's just hanging there, suspended, motionless. Pardon? Yeah, instead of normal force, so if this is on a cable, scratch. I want a record scratch noise. On a rope or on a cable. Then instead of normal force, we're now talking about force of tension. Okay. These names matter. Um, they are standard conventions that are used in physics, um, and they do matter. So you should know what normal force is. You should know what force of tension is. Um, force of tension is on ropes and cables. Um, normal force is being exerted from surfaces in opposition to gravity. Okay.
This part's easy. Everybody likes this. So we can, but this is, this is essentially a mathematical proof that in this case, the normal force or the force of tension, depending on whether we say this thing is hanging on a cable or sitting on the ground, is equal to the negative of mass gravity, equal to, equal to and opposite um, the force of gravity. Okay, cool. Let's, let's up the ante. When we put an object on a slope, this is where things change. So when we put an object on a slope, one thing doesn't change. Force of gravity, what is the force of gravity? No yawning, come on, we're all awake, it's Monday, woo! What is the force of gravity? Okay, it's the force of attraction between the Earth's center and an object. And the force of gravity is always, always, always directly down into the Earth. Straight down, straight line into the Earth. Normal force is a force that's coming off of the surface. It's being exerted by the surface upward on an object. Normal force is always, always, always perpendicular to the surface. When an object is on a slope, the normal force and the force of gravity are not directly in opposition with one another. Can we prove what the normal force is here? And of course, we're, we're assuming that we all, whoops, we all know that force of gravity equals mass gravity. And this is some angle theta. Do we have a way to algebraically prove the force of the normal force, the force of the surface. We do. We have to do a sum of forces in order to do that. So here's the thing. We have to be able to resolve vectors in order to do this. And what we know, let's see if I can get this as a line and get it spaced. So gravity in this case is actually not all one thing. We have a force of gravity that is existing on the y, and we have a force of gravity existing on the x. If you have ever slid down a slope, down a hill, down a ramp, down a sliding board, what's the force that pulls you down the slide? Gravity. It's existing on the x-axis. Now, of course, we're tilting the x-axis because it makes these problems um, about 10 times easier to solve because we only have to resolve one vector. So if we want to figure out what the normal force on this object is, we can do a sum of forces on the y-axis. If, if we're not told that if this thing is not rising up into the air or crashing down through the surface, sum of forces on this axis, which, by the way, is equal to ma, is also equal to what? Zero. On the y-axis, we want all the forces up and all the forces down. Sum of forces on the y. What's our first force up? What is it? Normal force, yeah. We haven't talked about that yet. We're going to. Good. Um, whoops. And what's our force down? Force of, gravity on the y. force of gravity on the y. Now, something I didn't do here yet. You need to get accustomed to writing expressions, and I, I have a few folks who are not doing that. We have to look at this force of gravity on the x and force of gravity on the y, and we'll talk more about this when we talk about force of tensions. Force of gravity on the y here is equal to the force of gravity times what? Cosine theta. Force of gravity on the x is equal to force of gravity sine theta. And if you have problems seeing the geometry of that, I have a little tutorial on how to, how to visualize that that angle is, in fact, the same, at the same as the angle at the bottom of the ramp. Um, by now, this should be pretty routine for you, looking at that and, and breaking apart the vectors. You should have gotten pretty good at that when we were doing um, two-dimensional motion. So let's shrink those up a little bit. So, 
what we have then is that the sum of forces on the y, and we can at this point probably ditch saying sum of forces on the y. We can say that the normal force is equal to the negative of FGY, which means normal force is equal to F, FG cosine theta. You've got to plug those expressions in. You cannot do that as a separate problem. The reason being, we are rapidly coming to a point where it, your, your life, <laughs> your physics problem, will depend on having those expressions in the body of your equation. And your equation starts with sum of forces. Because what this allows you to do is things like solve for the mass of an object, solve for the angle at which an object begins to slide. Um, even if you don't know the mass or don't know a whole bunch of other factors, just like with um, our two-dimensional motion problems, we got to, a si got to situations where you were able to cancel out initial velocity. Well, I don't have initial, initial velocity. Oh, look, it can, I can algebraically make it disappear. And that's what's going to start happening here once we get into C and D. Question. Ah, sorry, that should be negative FG cosine theta. Thanks. Good call. Okay. We didn't say anything about a force of friction on this, and we're going to talk more about friction in the next couple days. But let me add one, and I'm going to shrink my sum of forces on the y. So we, you know, to sum that up, ha, 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 sum it up, never mind. Um, um, we now have a, a mathematical algebraic proof that the normal force is equal to mass, gravity, cosine, theta. Cool. We could take that one step further and say, you know, normal, actually, I probably should, huh? Yeah, you probably should, Moser. Um, normal force equals negative mass, gravity, cosine theta. That's as far as we can take it. That's, until we have numbers, that's as far as we can go. But let's look at the x-axis. So as was um, quietly pointed out in whispers from the back of the room, um, there's no friction on this. So friction is a force, and like I said, we're going to start talking about friction probably tomorrow. Friction is a force that opposes motion. Up to now, you've just been given the force of friction. Um, you all have experience in the world with slopes and things, like yourself and slides and boxes and ramps. Which way would this object move on this slope? Downhill. Things do not spontaneously rise up sliding boards. It would be really fun if they did. Um, friction opposes motion, so our force of friction is going to be existing this direction. And that would be F sub F. And we'll get in, we'll start to, starting tomorrow, we'll start seeing two different kinds of friction, static and kinetic, and you'll get coefficients for that. Um, but for now, we can still just talk about force of friction. Um, I was able to ignore this up to now because the force of friction doesn't exist on the y-axis. I don't have to think about it in terms of the y-axis. But I do have to think about it if I'm going to do a sum of forces on the x-axis. And, of course, I'm going to. So sum of forces on the x-axis. Oh, left, right, up, down. Bah. So it's really easy on the y-axis because you can say all the forces up, all the forces down. On the x-axis, um, I am sometimes reduced to saying all the forces this way and all the forces that way if I'm writing a note to myself. Um, all the forces left, all the forces right, however you want to frame it. This is not our formal start. This is just reminding yourself, okay, i got to look for all the forces going in one direction and all the forces going in the other direction. So if I look at this, and, and by the way, we don't know if this thing is moving or not. We have not been told if this thing is moving up or down the ramp. And right now, because we're talking in generalities, we don't even have um, numbers for any of these forces or for the mass. But this is going to equal its mass times its acceleration. It could be standing still. It could be holding. We don't know. So, sum of forces on the x. Well, give me one force that's pointing this way, down the ramp. Force of gravity on the x. F sub g x. Um, do we have any other forces on, uh, heading down the ramp on that axis? No. Give me forces pointing up the ramp on this axis. Friction. Okay, now, 
Anybody uncomfortable with force of gravity on the X being down the ramp? Here's the thing to remember. Vectors can always be moved parallel to themselves. This is, in fact, here. It's acting on the object there. It's typically easier to visualize mathematically if we leave it down there to see that, oh, yeah, that's going to be sine of, of theta. But um, it, it is, in fact, acting on the x-axis. Okay, we have an expression for the force of gravity on the x-axis. Let's shrink that a little bit. And at this point, I'm going to ditch the sum of forces x. So I've got Fg sine theta plus force of friction equals mass times acceleration. And I can go one more step. So Fg sine theta, what else can I do with that? F of G is mass gravity. So I have mass gravity sine theta plus the force of friction equals mass times acceleration. Okay. So this allows me to solve for force of friction. It allows me to solve for acceleration, which is a pretty common one. Is this thing accelerating up or down the ramp? Is it moving? Is it stuck still? Um, it allows you to solve for theta if you have a lot of other factors. Um, and it actually allows you to solve for the mass of an object. That's also one that we do fairly commonly, um, including some that are, are sort of more interesting algebraic solves where you get a lot less information than you think you should. <laughs> um, like, just... I'm trying to think of an example off the top of my head. I can't think of one off the top of my head. But um, it, it allows you to do a lot algebraically. And we're going to start to introduce um, some other variables and expressions today that, or tomorrow that will give you even more tools. So let's talk about this. Okay, question, questions on on a slope. Do you see why it's important to do a picture and a sum of forces on these? You have more forces and more sort of issues than you might think you do. So let's talk about on a rope. Um, this is not something that's just hanging on a cable. This is something that is, you know, happily sitting on the grass, sitting on the ground, being pulled on. Okay? And you're going to talk a lot about this when you do your friction and forces mini lab because you'll be pulling things around in boxes on rope. So here we have a case, and I think there's a problem in 4... A, where the, the dog is on a leash and it's sitting and someone's pulling on its neck, which is terrible, by the way. But, um, you know, what's, what's the force? So here we have a force of a puller. And this can be called a force of tension. Um, you know, if this is a cable or a guy line or something, very often what we do by convention is if we're told that a person or, a, you know, the force of a motor or something, like a winch, is the thing pulling on it, we'll name that force thusly. So, you know, if this is Madison pulling on a box with a rope, um, you know, you've decided to pull your books around on a sled in the halls, what fun, um, you know, we would call this force of Madison. So, we have a force of a puller. If this thing is sitting on the ground, we still have what? Force of gravity, bad arrow, Moser, bad arrow. We still have F of G. Do, does, the sub, <laughs> does the force of gravity here require... Um, any vector resolution? No. It's all on the y-axis, which is great. We have normal force, F sub n. Does the normal force require any sort of resolution? No, absolutely not. The only force that requires any resolution here is the force of the puller, Gesundheit. And we have F P X. F, P, Y. F of PX, of course, is the force of the puller. Whoops. Times what? Cosine theta. Force of puller on the Y is going to be F puller sine theta. Sine theta. Fantastic. So just to, to hop back here for a minute. Here we said normal force um, sitting on the ground is equal to the negative of mass gravity. Here it's equal to a component of mass gravity. It's equal to the part of mass gravity that it is in direct opposition to. 
Is normal force here going to be equal to the force of gravity? I'm really glad that you're all being careful. Um, is the normal force here going to be equal to the force of gravity? And you guys are all being careful. Some of you, some of you are jumping to answers. Um, some of you are right. Some of you are wrong. Most of you are just being darn careful. Careful is good. Um, so I'm going to add to this, even though, like I said, we haven't really talked about it formally. If this box is moving, and I haven't told you if this box is moving or sitting still, um, there's going to be, you know, whether it is or not, there's going to be some force of friction between the box and the surface. So I, I put force of um, friction in there. We will clarify and elucidate that more probably tomorrow. So let's do a, a, a sum of forces. Let's start off, well, we assume that this thing is not um, rising into the air or sinking into the ground. We haven't been told it is, and those would be unusual circumstances. So let's do a sum of forces on the y. We assume that it equals zero. You know, I, I, I guess we don't have to assume. I'm making up this problem in this little world. So it's not rising into the air. It's not sinking through the ground. Sum of forces on the y, therefore, is zero. Yes? Okay, so I know, as always, my um, sum of forces on the y is going to be all my forces up plus all my forces down. That's just sort of standard. So, and it equals mass acceleration, but we know it's zero. It's not rising up. It's not sinking down. So name me a force up. Normal force. Fn. Plus what? Plus force of the puller on the Y. Any other forces up? Mm -mm, I don't see any. What are your forces down? Force gravity. And it all equals zero. So, normal force on the Y is FP sine theta. Here we have f of g. I could substitute mg for that at this point. Seems like a reasonable point at which to do that. Is my normal force going to be equal and opposite to gravity? No. We have another force in play on the y-axis. This is why it's so important to get accustomed when it's easy to doing that sum of forces every time because it's rapidly going to get more complicated and you will have more balls in the air than you can keep track of <laughs> unless you're a superior juggler in which case I want to see a demonstration in class um, and so to, to track to sort of account for all those forces you need a good picture and you need a sum of forces okay at this point what we know to be true is that Fn plus the force of the puller times the sine of theta is equal to the mass of gravity, negative mass gravity. Normal force here is not equal to mass gravity. Um, here's, here's what we rapidly discover. There is one set of circumstances under which normal force is equal to mass gravity, and that is sitting on the ground or hanging on a cable, well, then we're talking about force of tension, um, doing nothing. In all other circumstances, the normal force or the force of tension is going to be not equal to the negative of mass gravity. So we say, well, in general, normal force is in opposition to gravity, and that's true um, in each of these examples. It is in opposition to gravity. It's acting opposite gravity, but in some cases it's only acting opposite to a portion of gravity. In some cases, it's a little bit more than gravity because there's some other force in the mix. Okay? We haven't nailed every possible example. That would be ridiculous. But what I'm hoping is that you see, oh, crap, yeah, I do have to do that. Uh, because once we start friction, it gets uglier and there are more factors in play. Um, we're going to introduce coefficients of friction. So start with a good image. Start with a good free body diagram. Start with a sum of forces. Let's actually, you know what, let's finish. 
um, this one up by doing sum of forces on the x, just because we can. Okay. Sum of forces on the x. We don't know if this thing is moving or not. We haven't been told. But we know it's equal to ma. If it's not moving ma, or if it's moving at equilibrium, if it's moving at constant velocity, um, that ma will equal zero. And it's going to be all the forces one direction plus all the forces in another direction. Okay. Give me a force, so ma equals, give me a force sort of towards the negative, cart the Cartesian negative on the x. Force of friction. Give me a force on the Cartesian positive. Force of what? Force of polar on the x. And so we can then say that this is force of friction plus force of the polar times cosine theta. It's really important to get used to doing these substitutions. Don't try to do them as a separate problem. Um, you need to have those, you need to be able to put those in there algebraically. Um, it allows you to do things that you cannot do otherwise. And you know what I realized? <laughs> anyway, okay, so questions on that? Good? Okay.